Today on Live With A Classic, we start to dig deeper into Bosch DJtronic. Welcome back to Love With A Classic, and thank you so much to all of those who watched the first part on DJtronic. That was just a basic overview of how the system works, and specifically how it works on Jaguar V12s. And thank you for all that nice feedback and everyone seemed to be excited to get a second part and more information on the system. So like I said, let's make a mini series on how to troubleshoot the system, how to tune it properly and how to get it to run just right. Um, that is a lot of information. So I will split this up in multiple videos. And then this first one, we're going to go through the map sensor. Uh, if this looks unfamiliar to you, then you need to go check out my first video. There's a link coming up right now. And I go through all the basics of the system, um, every single part of the fuel injection system, and basically how it works together. But in this part of the first part of troubleshooting, we're only going to focus on the map sensor. There were a couple different types of map sensors used on various DJtronic systems. Uh, I'm only going to focus on the Type 2, which is the one that was used uh, on the V12s and at least on the European V12s. I believe that there was a slightly different one on the US ones. Uh, I don't have one, so sadly I can't show you how to test one. However, the other ones are not prone to failure. It's the Type 2 that are prone to failing and prone to give you a rich running when they fail. So these are important ones to check out. So let's go over to the workbench. Uh, I'll show you how to test every single part of this with tools that you can have at home. If you don't have any of these tools, I'll put links down below where you can get them. Uh, there's only two specialist tools that you actually need. At least with these tools, you can eliminate if it's bad, because then you know you don't have to spend any time bolting on to your car and seeing if it works. Because if it passes these tests, I'd say with 90, 95% certainty, it's going to work just fine. So let's head over to the workbench and start testing it. So here we are at the workbench. Let's say that you um, don't think your car is running right. You think it's running rich and you suspect that your map sensor is at fault. And you start by consulting your manual. You'll find in here some information on how to test that sensor. Basically, it's only an electrical test. It tells you to pull the sensor and to check the connections between these points. So let's do that right now with a multimeter. Here we have a basic multimeter. I'm going to set it to 2000 ohms. All right, so if we follow the instructions, it says between 7 and 15, these are the uh, terminal connection points on the sensor. You should have 85.5 to 94.5 ohms of resistance. So if you can see here are numbers 7, 8, 10, and 15. Those are the terminal points inside. So let's start with 7 and 15. And that's 91. And that's between 85 and 94. So that's good. So it passed the first test. Then between point 0.8 and point 0.10, which are the two inner ones, and we get 350, which is between 346 and 353. So it passed those two tests. Now you need to check between uh, 7 or 15 and ground, 8 or 10 and ground. So 7 and ground. 10 and ground, 15 and ground, 8 and ground. And that's a pass for all of those parts. So then according to the manual, your um, map sensor is just fine. But this one is broken. So now I'm going to show you how to properly test the rest of it. Because to be honest, the electrical part hardly ever fails on these. What does fail is the membrane inside. Um, there is a uh, metal diaphragm in here that moves back and forth. And it is only 0.05 millimeters thick. So 
with time, of course, it's going to fail. It's it's just a mathematical probability of when, not if, it's going to fail. So let me show you how you test it. This is what you need to test it. You need some type of vacuum tester. Uh, this is a really simple one. It's used for testing uh, any vacuum operated system. You can also use it to breed your brakes. So it just has a hose here. And let's see if I plug it off, I can show you how it works. And you pump up a vacuum and then you can release it here. So simply connect this onto your sensor. And the great thing about this, it can be done with the sensor still in the car or off the car if you have a spare one like I do. The test is really simple. Carefully pump up a vacuum of negative 0.5 bar, which is right up there, and count how long it takes for the pressure to drop to negative 0.45 bar. So basically drop 0.05 bar. It has to be more than 10 seconds. If it's less than 10 seconds, it's leaking too badly for it to work correctly. This one, if I remember correctly, it takes uh, less than 10 seconds, but it's pretty close to 10 seconds. So the car does actually run with this and it runs pretty well. However, it doesn't run as well as it should. Carefully just pump up a vacuum. You can hear the diaphragm moving in there. And that is it, negative 0 0.5. One, two, three, four, five. So that's only five seconds for it to drop to uh, 0 0.45 bar. So this is definitely a fail. And this is the test that no one actually does when they try to sell you a used one of these on eBay or anything. They'll test the connections. They say, yeah, it's fine. No one has been into it. No one has opened up the rivets. That hasn't been tampered with. They'll sell you that this is a good unit, but it's not gonna run right. And that's how to properly test your map sensor at home. You need to have a vacuum tester to test it fully. Just testing the electrical part is not enough. If you find that yours is not working, I'm sorry, because these are quite expensive. Uh, you can get uh, them restored by Bosch, that's really pricey. There are a few independent specialists out there that do restore these. Uh, usually they work for Bosch and they have all the parts and the knowledge of how to replace them. These are not serviceable at home. They're sealed with rivets for a reason. You're not supposed to open them up because uh, when you do replace the parts inside them, they need to be tuned and set up by a special Digitronic Bosch machine basically to set them up correctly and tune them. And that's not something that you can do at home. At the moment, there are no new ones available. Uh, I really wish that someone would make a new one and that would be really interesting because they're not really anything complicated. It's a vacuum sensor, that's all. So it would be really cool if you could get a new vacuum sensor, maybe built into one of these cases, a tiny small one, and then with some type of circuitry, make it mimic what this one does and make it work with the original equipment. But sadly, no one's doing that at the moment that I'm aware of. If you know of new ones, please let me know because that would be really great to know that you can get these. Um, also, if you find a used one, don't pay that much for them because usually they're broken and only buy them if you're really able to test them with a vacuum tester. So if you go into a place to look at these, uh, bring a vacuum tester along. And if you don't have one of these, I have a link down below where you can pick one up. I'll put several ones. They're a really excellent tool to have and a must have when testing these uh, map sensors. Uh, if you found this video useful, please hit the like button and share it with your friends. Like I said, it will be a mini series, so there will be Another part coming up soon where I will go through the uh, pressure regulators for the fuel system, uh, go through the injectors, uh, go through the trigger system, basically go through the whole system. But this was the first and most important part of the DJtronic fuel injection system. But until next time, I'm Adam and this was Live With A Classic. I'll see you soon.